Good morning, everyone. This is Rama on Riding coming to you live from a beautiful, well, soon to be beautiful day in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. After the webinar, we're heading north to the best beaches on the island. And we're going to head even further north to this cute little touristy town that has one of the best little farmers markets around. So we're going to have lots of treats today. Today's topic is press releases. And although many of us may not pursue uh, press releases in the traditional way, there's a lot that we can gain from understanding how to put one together and also looking at some of the digital uh, um, avenues for press releases. So uh, that will be the second part of the conversation today, or maybe the third part. We'll see. We'll probably break this one up a little bit into a few different segments. We are lucky today that I was able to track down one of the Tom Bird webinars on press releases. And I say lucky because for those of you who don't know, Tom essentially started off his career as a press agent for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So he was a big time press person and he sent out press releases on a daily basis. So his knowledge base is, uh, is phenomenal here. Um, he's a very multi-talented uh, individual with a lot of experience, so uh, we're lucky. The amazing component is that I actually was able to find this webinar. Um, I still, you know, I, I want to pat myself on the back for that one because, you know, <laughs> it's like being a digital pack rat, you know? <laughs> okay, well, we're going to, uh, I'm going to play this. Um, I'm going to play this here. Let me just see if I can, uh, what I have to do here to get this to, uh, to uh, play the way I want it to. Nope, that's not working right. It's just take me a little bit of time to find out uh, how to share my screen um, with this taking over the screen. So I think I'm going to put my... Okay, let's see, I'm going to try putting up a screen share. Let's see if I can track down, give me a second here, that's not working. Um, well, let's just see, maybe if I hit that screen share, okay, here we go. Okay, come on, come on. Well, heck. That's not working. Okay, let's uh, let's think of it again here. Hold on. Let me stop my screen share. Okay, then we're going to do it a different way. Let's see. Come on. Well, heck, I had this thing working this morning. It's just... Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, gang, it's Tom and Rama for the press release webinar. Hey, I want to make sure that you have plenty of paper and a pen or pencil handy there. We will be going over a lot of technical information. I'm going to give you just a moment or two to make sure that you've got something to write on. That you're nice and comfortable because we'll, we will be going over a significant amount of 
technical information that you'll need to take notes on. Just make sure you have a pen and paper, Cindy. I used to send out press releases for a living for about five years, so there's a lot that I have to say about them. Okay, first point, I want you to write this down. Press releases are the accepted and expected form of communication between you or anyone else in the media. Point number two, whether you submit yourself, submit your information in a press release form or not, will directly determine whether your whether your information is seriously considered for publication. Is seriously considered for publication. You see, the media, more than any time ever in history, is busier than ever. There's more news that's transpiring. There's more people that are trying to get news pushed through. And because of the downsizing of newspapers and such, they have less and less reporters. So these reporters and these editors are doing more than they've ever done before. So they're looking for reasons to reject your ideas just for self-preservation purposes. So if you don't send something in in a press release form, it gives them an excuse, the convenient excuse they're looking for to reject your idea. There are two forms of press releases, and I will, as we get into our discussion a little bit further tonight, I will be going into the actual breakdown of press releases and components to make them up. There are two forms of press releases. There is the one-page informational press release. These one-page informational, informational press releases are normally sent out to media sources, large media sources, that have reporters on staff. The purpose of these one-page press releases is to bring to their attention a storyline, a story idea, which they can now research and write up on their own. It's very important to make the distinction between that and the full-length press release. The full-length press release is actually a press release that is written in the form of an article. Why? Because the people that you'll be sending it to normally don't have editorial or reporting staffs large enough to research and write the article themselves. But they will be more than happy to take your article, put their byline on it, and print it. They just don't have the staffs to write up the material themselves. So you want to distinguish You want to distinguish who you're sending your press releases to. That way you can determine if you're sending them a one-page press release or a multi-page press release in the form of an article. The large newspapers with the editorial staffs normally would be insulted if you sent them a full-length story. They'd feel like you were twisting their arm too much to write a story and that they didn't have the competency to do it on their own. That's why you have the division between the two.
Now, components that make up a press release. Write all these down as well, too. Press releases should always be written in the third person. The most important part of a press release isn't actually included in the press release itself. The most important part of a press release can be found in the subject line of the email that precedes the press release. That's the most important part of the whole press release scenario is the subject line that you use. So don't include the word press release and the subject line. Come up with a title for that subject line that offers a perspective that they would be looking for or could be looking for that will entice them in potentially using your material. Local author strikes big. Local author challenges prominence of Harry Potter. And remember, news to some degree, at least some degree, is controversial. Please keep that in mind, especially with this title. All news is controversial. A controversial doesn't mean that you have to create a major stir. It just means controversy, the key to controversy. It's simply going against an accepted rule or belief or thought. Accepted rule or belief or thought. For example, with my example about local author challenges prominence of Harry Potter. That's controversial because Harry Potter, the author of Harry Potter, is an icon. Established a whole new venue of writing. And by saying that, you're saying, I'm as good as or better than the Harry Potter series. That's controversy. And remember, controversy is what sells. And it's especially helpful if you can stick in the subject line, local author or native, local native. Well, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania. If I was pitching a story to the newspaper here, I'd say former Erieite, meaning me. That's very important. I was looking for local angles. Always looking for local angles. Okay, so the most important part of the press release package is the subject line which you use to describe your press release on the emails that you'll be sending. It needs to spike, speak of controversy in one way or another, and give a local angle if possible. It's very, very important. Most press releases, and this is the toughest thing about press releases, is to get them read. Most don't ever get read because they don't have the correct subject line. And what you, your goal is for your press releases to get read, you can't. It's not up to you if it gets used. But it's under your control if you get it read. And that all begins with the title of the subject line. On the inside of your press release, the actual press release itself, whether it be a one page or a multi page press release, right at the top of the your page, first page of your press release, right hand margin, should be the words. For immediate release in all caps. For immediate release in all caps. Below that, and upper and lowercase lettering, should be the word contact and colon. Contact followed by colon. And put the name with a contact who you want people to get a hold of. If they want to get a hold of you, put that person's name there. Contact Brown with John Kogan and a phone number. Don't forget area code. Contact. Below that, it's centered. 
should be the title of your press release, which in most cases is going to be the title, same title that you use in the subject line for your email of this press release. Now please keep in mind that the press release is again written in third person. It should either start out with a captivating quote or a statement that answers the question, who, what, and potentially when, who, what, and potentially when. It should never, personally, should never start out with a question because you're asking a question of someone who doesn't care at that point. A statement or a quote. That first paragraph on the press release is what is referred to as the grabber. Another important fact to keep in mind. None of the paragraphs in your press release should be any longer than five lines in length. Why? Because if they're longer than five lines in length, they look too long and cumbersome to read. The press release should be made up of short, very direct paragraphs. So the press release starts out again with a grabber under five lengths, five lines in length. And answers the questions who, what, and potentially when. The next paragraph, paragraph two of the press release, should elaborate on the controversy you created in the first paragraph of your press release. The next three to four paragraphs of your press release, and this is, this is for the one page press release, by the way, I'm describing. Next three or four short paragraphs should elaborate in great depth about what it is you're attempting to pitch. For example, you may want to describe the, your book what people have said about it, what people have said about you as an author, the breakdown and makeup of your book. Those three to four paragraphs describe the product it is that you're attempting to sell. And that product may be a controversy as a result of what is written and published in your book. The final component of your press release. This is the last paragraph. The last paragraph, which should reiterate the points you made in the first paragraph. Which should reiterate the points you made in your first paragraph. So we're kind of bookending this press release. Starting out by making a significant point, we're gonna hit it one more time with that significant point before we leave the press release. And at the bottom center of your press release, a few lines beneath the last paragraph should be the symbol dash, an actual dash, 3030 dash, 30 dash. That's old newspaper talk for end. Dash, 30 dash. Now the longer version of the press release, the actual article, is made up of the same components as the shorter version. They're just longer. So you start out with the first paragraph grabber, second paragraph elaboration, and where you devote three to four paragraphs to going into greater depth on what it is you're attempting to sell or pitch on the longer version. The 
multi-page version, that's when you'll go from three or four paragraphs into maybe three or four pages. That's the meat of your article. And that again will end. That again will end with the dash 30 dash beneath it. So again, on the long press release, the article you're saying that primarily, you're targeting that for smaller newspapers that don't have large enough reporting or editorial staffs to do the research you're writing on their own. Websites, blogs, individual email addresses. The shorter one is specifically used for large publications, and there's not many of them around anymore. You do that editorial and reporting staff. I'll give you a moment just to write that down before I go into the next bit of information. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about, um, there's three keys, three keys to being able to find a home for a press release. First key is establishing a professional rapport with the writing of your press release, which we've already gone over. Second key is this, finding the right person to send it to. So oftentimes, people who are newbies at this get the impression that they can just fire off a letter or press release, poorly written press release to a newspaper, and the newspaper will read it. They won't read it. Okay, If it doesn't have the elements I'm talking about, it has, stands no chance of getting read. In fact, even if you do follow the elements I talked about, we will still struggle to get it read. So instead of just firing off a press release to think you've done the best job possible, it's very important to research the sources who you could potentially send it to. And how do you do that? First of all, you want to send it to the right reporter, not the right editor, the right reporter. So if you're going to a major newspaper, how do you find that person? Each major newspaper has websites, well-developed websites that you can go to and research back copies of their publications. They also have search capabilities. So one of the things that you may be looking for through doing a search on a certain website, you may want to put in the word book. And it'll bring up every article in the last few years that's been done on books. Or local author. And see what reporters have most prominently put themselves in a position to write articles on local authors or books. Those will become the reporters who you want to send your material to. Now, which is status quo? Normally at these websites, they have specific emails and phone numbers, direct contact phone numbers for these reporters. That's pretty status quo. So you can get their email addresses pretty easy. You can get the phone numbers pretty easy. So you'll send out the press releases to the specific reporters. Or again, if you're dealing with blogs or websites, online publications, you'll probably send it to the owner of the blog, website, or online publications. So that's the second point, making sure you send it to the right person. Third, most important point about getting something published. We'll talk in a few minutes about what publication can do for you. Third, the most important point is the follow-up. I don't have any provable statistics, but having been in this business as long as I have and having been on a full-time basis for five years consistently before I became an author, I would say the open rate on a press release is probably less than 15%. So how do you get your press release acknowledged and read? You call the reporter you send it to. 
say, hey, I sent you a press release, did you get it? In most cases, the answer will be, I don't remember seeing it or no. And guilt goes a long way in this business. So the reporter on the other end of the line may feel guilty, which would not be unusual. So I'm sorry, I didn't, I don't remember seeing it. And then you you make the offer. Can I send it to you right now? Right now, can I email to you, can I fax it to you? And the normal response to that will be yes. Again, so remember our job. Our initial job with press releases is to get them read. Guilt plays a big part of it. Follow-up is essential. Follow-up, I'm gonna tell you, for every press, every 10 press releases you get placed, nine of them will come as a result of follow-up on your end. Now, when you call these people, and I always call them for follow-up, don't email them. When you call the reporter, you may not get a hold of he or she first time or two. Keep track of your efforts when you called what you said. Every time you call back, they'll leave another message. Escalate your concern. For example, the first time you call and say, hey, since you press release, Bob, on Tuesday, I want to make sure you got it. Call back the following Thursday. Bob, I left you. I sent you a press release last week and follow up the phone call. I haven't heard from you. Uh, I really want to make sure you got this press release or, or I don't want to verify you the right percent to send it to. Don't hear anything again. Call back the next week. Um, this is my third call. I don't want to be a problem child, but um, I would like to call back. I sent you a press release. It's on the topic I, I know that you're an expert in and know that you've done a good job of covering before, and I want to make sure the press release was received by you. So every time you call back, you want to escalate politely, politely escalate your degree of commitment and concern about making sure the press release gets through. It's very important. You'll find that the majority of press releases that are accepted and published come as a result of a good, deliberate, diligent effort on the end of the person who submitted it. Now what I would suggest as well too, with your follow-up, follow-up on Mondays and Thursdays, Monday and Thursdays. Mondays because they're fresh in the office, they're happy from a weekend away. Thursday before so you can catch it, try to catch it before they leave for the week. So if you make a call on Monday, have a heard back for by a Thursday, make sure that person is on your list to call that Thursday. Now after six, follow up mm -hmm. attempts to a report group if you hear nothing. There's two approaches you can take. Two approaches you can take. First approach which I would recommend is to contact the editor at the from the department in which the reporter works. Usually it'll be the news editor or features editor. Contact the editor and say, hey, I, I sent Bob this press release, I saw the phone calls, I'm a local author, it's a very timely topic, and I haven't heard back from Bob, I was wondering if you could follow up for me. One approach. Second approach, if you can't, if you have a difficult time getting a hold of the editor, call the receptionist at the newspaper. Just call the receptionist and say, Hey, I sent a press release to the Bob, I'm a local author, got a book coming out. Never heard from them, tried to editor, didn't hear there. Who would you recommend I speak to then? And the receptionist is so they don't have to continually take your calls and that calls for will usually pipe you into the person that you most need to speak to. So this deals with whether you are actually making the calls yourself or having someone do it for you. Wayne Dyer um, did this type of thing when he was an unknown author. He did it with bookstores, though. Same approach, but he did it with bookstores. And uh, what he would do, I'm not suggesting you go to this degree of on ethics, but he would call bookstores, randomly call bookstores every day, 20 bookstores a day. And he'd call and say, uh, can I speak to the manager of the bookstore, the manager of the bookstore would get on and say, I'm a local client of yours, even though in a lot of cases he wasn't because he was calling out of state. Uh, and uh, I was wondering if you had Wayne Dyer's book. 
And uh, the books are on. I say, I'm sorry, Wayne. Who? Wayne Dyer. He's a great author. Fantastic. I mean, myself, all my friends want to buy his book, but if you don't have it, so we can go support. So, so no, I'm sorry. So we'll, well, next year we'll start Mr. Dyer's book. How could you, could you spell his last name again, please? So that was how we got his book placed in these bookstores. And when someone calls and recommends a book or requests a book, that really spikes the attention of the bookstore, which price the book in a prominent position in the story we sold, and the rest is history. But I'm asking you to do pretty much the same thing, but within a little bit more ethical boundaries with your press release. Now, why the media? Well, we live in an age of going viral. Going viral. The easiest way to go viral with information on a book is to have a newspaper run a story on you. A lot of good chance that newspaper is connected with a wire service or wire services monitor what comes out in that newspaper. And if the story is a good one and is interesting, has a unique angle to it, a wire service may pick it up and not spread that story just across the country or across the county or across the state, but across the globe. And that can happen in the course of hours. So you should go from struggling off here, just sold 10 books, lucky to have sold 10 books last year, to all of a sudden selling 10,000 the next month. And that can begin and end with your ability to properly process a press release. Another reason press releases are important is because advertising doesn't work for first analysis. It doesn't work because you're not a known commodity, so it's, a, it's, a, it's impossible to advertise a commodity that no one recognizes. If you were the designer of the first screwdriver and no one knew what a screwdriver was, and you came out and did an ad about screwdrivers, people would say, what is a screwdriver? They don't, wouldn't even know if they needed it. Once you're established commodity, advertising works. Before then, it does not. And newspaper articles, especially, blog listings, online publications, they carry more credibility weight than anything else out there. Anything else out there. Because they're still seen as discriminating, discriminating information sources. So more than anything else, they can give you the credibility that you're all shooting for. Now, once articles are done on you, you want to make sure that you post those articles on your blogs and your websites because the articles will begin driving through, through Google, will be, begin driving people to your website. For example, if there's an article done on Rama uh, and he had it on his website, that would automatically draw people to his website because when you put in Rama John Kogan, that article will come up probably on the first page. And to read it, you'd have to go to Rama's website. So there's a natural draw then for increasing the size of your list, your popularity, and your sales through your website. Now, for next week, what I want you to do is write your first press release, a one page press release. No, I'm not giving you an example of how to do it. I don't want to give you an example of how to do it because I want to see through your efforts what you don't know. Okay, gang. Uh, now you uh, now you've had the Tom Bird rap about press releases. I think it was very informative, and I doubt that I could have uh, done as good a job. But I can take it from. Uh, from here, we can reiterate a few points, and then I can talk about uh, some services that are offered, and there are a number of missing components yet. Okay, now first off, uh, um, it's obvious that uh, we have to kind of dodge a little bit because we're writing the press release ourselves, but we generally don't want to be the contact person behind it. That's a, you know, kind of an unprofessional sort of way of uh, rolling this out. So uh, you, it, unless you're a good um, actor, 
and you can change your name and not connect yourself with the book as the author, but as the agent for the author, uh, which is possible. Uh, that's the contact information. If you'll remember, Tom used my name in those uh, uh, first go arounds. You know, I was the contact person uh, as the publisher, the agent for the author. So uh, that's a critical component because we're trying to, you know, be a lot more professional than we really are. Okay, we're just a bunch of first time authors that haven't a clue of what we're doing, but we don't want to let on to anyone that that's the case okay so that's one of the critical components uh you know obviously i mean if if we take a look at at what tom laid out we're talking about a blog posting essentially the same kind of components you need the hook in the title line okay subject line title line critical and uh, this is a hard thing because as Tom mentioned, controversy, no vanilla-ness here, gang. Uh, you need to attract attention. And it's the same thing with our blog postings. And it's the same thing with the first, uh, you know, pinks in our book. So this is a strategy that we are uh, being versed in in everything that we do. Now, there are a couple of components that Tom left out that I want to bang home. Okay, and uh, since you've all fresh off of the uh, blogging webinar, what's the first thing I'm going to say? Key words, okay? <laughs> key words are critical. And as I said before, you have to weave the key words in so that they're not contrived. Uh, this is the art form of writing, blogging, press releases, even the book. You know, we are all the book blurbs, the author write-ups. It's all based on keywords. Why? Because these pieces have an incredible reach. If it gets out there, if it goes viral, uh, the, the intro of a book, the book blurb, a press release, a blog posting, these have legs. These have really, really long legs. And uh, this is our opportunity to get those legs to grow for us. So keywords are critical. Now, one of the other things that uh, Tom didn't mention in this, in this talk on press releases, although he has in the past, is that uh, you can provide link information. Okay, you can provide a link to the book. You can provide a link to the blog. Um, and there are reasons why links are important. But uh, let me hold off for a moment, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, now, there are services out there that do press release for authors, for anybody. And the big boy in this game is called PR Web. And I remember that Tom is not real hot on PR Web because it's hard to see results. They have a list of a huge number of places that the press release goes to. Um, but are those addresses and names uh, current? Well, we don't know. Um, and if you will remember in Tom's talk, he says nine out of 10 press releases that get placed, get placed due to follow up. PR web does not do this type of follow up as far as I can tell. So uh, you would need to get their source list and follow up on it because they're in a uh, competitive service. The likelihood of getting that source information is not really good. So the PR web type of press release serves another purpose. And this is a, this is, this is worthy. Okay. Uh, they're sending all this stuff out digitally. And it does bounce around in cyberspace. Well, if we have our name, our keywords, and some contact information, our book uh, link, our blog posting, then we're bouncing around the internet with this information. That's why the links can be very helpful. 
in such a thing. Okay, I checked uh, PR Web this morning. I think I actually have their website up. Uh, let me just see if I can uh, uh, post this real quick. Uh, da, da, da. Um, okay, good. PR Web. Let me just uh, share my screen again for you. And you can just get an idea here. Screen share. Now, where is my screen share? Where is the thing that I want to share? There we go. Okay, so what you have here is you have, uh, you know, a pricing structure. And in the realm of things, well, gosh, you know, uh, this sounds reasonable, $100 to uh, put a press release together and get it out to how many people. We don't know from this basic price, but, you know, that sounds reasonable. $369 for the big one where they probably uh, push you out to bigger places. I see in their, uh, in their listing here, um, uh, USA Today, uh, things like that. Now, just because they send a press release out to USA Today, uh, chances are it's not going to get even looked at. And that's why Tom doesn't really uh, like this, uh, you know, them as a business because they can't really deliver uh, the same way that it, we could deliver if we followed up with these sources. But, and this is a big but, uh, if we track it back to our website and our search engine optimization, then we can gain some very strong uh, presence as a result of this. So, in a traditional way, you're probably not going to get picked up by very many people with the thousands of uh, press releases that PR Web is sending out on your behalf. But because things bounce around in cyberspace, and if we have our keywords, our name, our links, our website, our blog, et cetera, and et cetera, attached to this, well, we're going to make points with the search engine uh, spiders. Okay, they're going to see it. And that's the key to the links in the press release is that they link back to the website. Google looks at that as being an important component. Okay, so those kind of services are available. As I say, PR Web is the big boy. I imagine that there are other services out there, although I can't uh, think of any. For those of you who are going to be working with Denise, Denise sends out a press release as well. I'm not sure where she sends it to, uh, but Essentially, she's doing it to create this activity, driving traffic to your Amazon page via the launch, launch uh, page that she puts together, okay? The reason she does this is that the Amazon ranking is based on uh, activity as much as it is on sale. Okay, so this is this is this is this is important to understand, and at the same time, this is rather disheartening as well. Okay, the disheartening component means that well, I became a number one Amazon bestseller. I sold twenty books. Uh, big F D, right? <laughs> I spent three thousand dollars. I sold twenty books. I became a number one Amazon bestseller. Okay, so uh, in 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 the moment, that isn't necessarily a good return on investment. Although uh, potentially it is huge. Okay, because once you're an Amazon number one bestseller, then you have street cred. Okay, people look at you differently. Uh, they may buy your book if you tell them you're an Amazon bestseller as opposed to I wrote a book, okay? So if we don't leverage this becoming an Amazon bestseller, then we're missing the, the boat 
as far as what Denise is offering in her program. Okay, and if you remember what Tom said is that if you do get placed in a press release, what do you do? You post it on your website. Same reason, if you don't take advantage of your gold stars, then they're not going to be found by people, or if they are, it's going to be a rarity. So we really want to, if we have a feather in a cap, we want to tickle everyone with that feather. Okay, we want everyone to know, we want to post things, we want to repost things. Um, so as a result of this type of thing, uh, when I wrote a little, um, a little uh, testimony for Catherine's last book, I, you know, I played around a little bit and it dawned on me, oh, why don't I start it by saying best-selling author Catherine Carrigan. <laughs> okay, I mean, these are the no-brainer things that we can miss if we're not putting the pieces together, okay? Uh, this is critical stuff, gang, and uh, in most cases, people miss these opportunities, okay? We miss the fact that somebody uh, sent us an email and said, oh, I loved your book. It made me laugh. Well, in, in an email to me, that's all fine and good. It makes me feel good. But if I don't take that and post that up on Facebook and Twitter and put it up on my website, I've lost the real juice behind this, okay? Uh, we can cut things up differently. We can put, lay them down differently. We can even add those kind of things to our Amazon Author Central page. Um, very important components relating to where we take the good news, essentially. So as Tom mentioned, follow through is important to get in front of somebody, but if we were to get in front of somebody and get some good results, we want to follow through again and continue to post it. And we can post it different ways. If it's got, you know, four or five different sentences that talk good about your book, that doesn't mean one post, that means four or five different posts. Okay, we want to extend the legs of everything that we've got. We want to blow our own horn. Um, and that's really hard because we're all very humble people. Uh, we are shy away from marketing because it gets, it, there's an icky feeling that we get when we start blowing our own horn. And we have to get over this. And unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing it other than, okay, get over it, okay? get over it and, you know, get into the marketing of this thing. There, there is no choice other than, oh, I wrote my book. That was what I wanted to do. I don't care anymore. Most of us act that way, but we don't feel that way, okay? And if we want to take it to the next step, we can't act that way either. So it's a really a, a critical component here. And as you've heard me say over and over again, we're very creative. We can come up with all kinds of reasons why we don't want to do this, okay? None of that matters, game. okay? All those reasons are fine and good, but it's not going to help you sell books. And, uh, you know, the easy solution, people think, oh, I'll get an agent who will do it for us. Yeah, right. You get an agent, you pay your agent money, and what happens? You end up by still having to do it. And you can talk to the agent and say, oh, this is what I did this week. Agent will pat you on the back and say, good job. <laughs> but they're not going to do it for you, okay? Now, there are different kinds of programs. Uh, some of you are working uh, or thinking about working with uh, Jackie the uh, Lopin in her uh, rollout, you know, she does, you know, get you interviews, okay? She sends out this information and she probably follows up on it and that's how she gets those uh, interviews. And then you get them on your schedule and you do anything, uh, you talk. Um, but what I've noticed and, uh, you know, uh, it, is that we may be doing these interviews, but we're not posting them anywhere. We're not, hey, I'm going to be doing an interview on this show. Here's the link. Here's the archive. Um, here's it on my web. Here's a list of shows I've done. Here's the link. Okay. Um, 
it's important to really look at our assets through this. And most of us don't have a lot of assets. So we really need to make the most out of every little uh, thing that we encounter. It's quite critical. Okay, well, look, I'm going to uh, unmute the bunch a little bit. Let's talk a little bit. And then if you want, I have a few, uh, I have a few samples of... Um, press releases that have been uh, reworked from their original, uh, um, you know, components based on some of Tom's info. But I'm going to unmute the group first here, and uh, I'm going to unmute everybody. But I hear an echo. Oh, I got a phone call coming through somebody. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute up this one here. Okay, that should have gotten the uh, phone call out. Uh, there's a little noise, but it's not too bad. Does anyone have any questions or comments on press releases at this point in time? Do you understand what Tom was saying? No, because I could not understand his gifting. It became verbal. I've missed we can't hear you. <laughs> I could not understand everything. I could not understand what he was saying because it became garbled and did not get through my hearing aid. Hearing problem. Okay, uh, Molly, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to post this up on my YouTube channel. I will uh, make sure that it is legible or hearable at that point in time. Um, you know, sometimes our internet isn't clear and we get into that digital uh, breakup. And uh, that may be what you encountered. And uh, if you're hearing it, it probably makes it worse than better. I also took copious notes, and I'm going to uh, put a blog posting together that covers the highlights of what Tom uh, talked about so that we all have a guide to go by. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Jill. Okay, so I think it would be helpful if we like pitched um, title titles. Like my idea was um, Stonehead not built by humans, but built by human fairies. Is that a good title? Uh, possibly, uh, uh, or something like human fairies take over the world. <laughs> Oh, I see. Or work with, yeah, human fairies will dance at Stonehenge or something. You know, something uh, like that could work, okay? So you're on the right track is, is the point, okay? Um, and it has, that has, human fairies taking over the world has nothing to do with my book. Yeah, so what's your... Stonehenge has nothing to do with my book. But, okay. but building human fairies building Stonehenge has something to do with, with my book. So does it matter? Is it just more your I mean it doesn't really matter. You're just throwing something out there that it's gonna open the door? Yes and no. Okay, you can't uh, you can't necessarily uh, pitch something that you're not going to deliver on. Okay. So, uh, but balancing the two, you know, as I say, we're we're kind of walking around, throwing ideas out, and the combination of uh, the wow and you know the connection to the book uh, will come about as a result of that. Okay. Okay, so it's more like we finally know who built Stonehenge. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Uh, yeah, human human fairies, uh, you know, uh, or you know, build Stonehenge or some something that you know alludes to that. Okay, so they said not to do it as a question. Yeah. Okay. I think but that could be in the blog. That would be, that could be part of the press release. Like, did you fairies? Could they have something like that? What? And uh, you know, actually, um, uh, Anari, you really did uh, uh, stumble on something. Okay, 
the stumble that you, you um, came on is that we're going to write a press release, but there's no reason why we can't take the same content and write a blog posting, you know, using similar components, but maybe not everything the same layout. So it's a two-step uh, process. So Inaria, uh, what would be a, uh, a title for your press release? Well, I would use the name of the book, Crystal and Stellar Skulls. Who are they? They really have exploded onto the planet. <laughs> well, I think I think I I might take the approach: Crystal Skulls explode onto the planet. Okay, something along those lines. So yes, uh, you know, using your title or part of your title, using some of your keywords. We talked about you know, crystal skulls. Stellar crystal skulls uh, would work. In Jill's case, human fairies uh, are part of the keyword structure that she's going to be leveraging. Um, you know, anyone else have a uh, have a idea for a topic? Um, hmm. Can we put pictures, like photographs, or fo or a picture of the cover of the book, or the, um, or like in my case, a picture of a skull, or a picture of us? Uh, is that um, is that worthy to put in there? Not in a press release per se. Okay, you can have some link information to that. Okay, here's the author's website. Okay, uh, you know, here's the blog, but. For a blog posting, on the other hand, uh, Darnita, you have an idea? Um, um, no, I don't have an idea. For that, but I do have a question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, um, do we do the follow up since we're not putting our name as a contact person? Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be people up here, but I'm getting a little bit of play. Uh, uh, so let me answer this uh, this question. Uh, what when we're working with press releases we really want the follow-up to be done by quote our agent our publicist our secretary our best friend <laughs> uh, you know not really ourselves okay um and this is a tough one because most of us don't have anyone like a publicist or an agent or even a secretary or uh you know we all have friends Okay, whether our friends are really capable of doing this or not is a different story. Okay, so this uh, this is kind of putting us between a rock and a hard place, um, you know. And I don't know if I have a really good answer for you at this point in time, uh, Darnita. As I say, when we rolled this out in 2013, I was the contact person, but I don't think we really rolled out the press releases to any any real entities it was uh part of our vision but i don't think that we you know uh, fulfilled that component so i don't really have any direct experience uh, other than you know i uh, for other reasons i did try to contact some press people and uh, as tom mentioned it's hard to get through to these people uh, they, you know, don't generally pick up their phone uh, often. Um, you know, you leave a message and, uh, you know, it's really just gets forgotten because the subject line of our press release didn't catch someone's attention more than likely maybe maybe that person uh, who wrote about books isn't writing about books anymore. Uh, maybe uh, you know, you know, you know. I don't know what the answer is here. Uh, so you know, what we really have to work with instead of uh, big media, we probably have small media to work with, which would be the bloggers, uh, maybe some of the forums that are about our topic. Um, maybe some magazines, uh, you know, uh, and this comes to mind, uh, Anarius Crystal Skulls 
would go uh, perfectly for a lot of publications. Uh, there's uh, the Sedona, um, I can't remember, I think she's already been in that, writing about crystal skulls. Uh, but now you have a book in Aria, so that would be, to me, that would be one of, uh, one of the top people that you want to contact is that publication uh, to see if you can get something more out of them. You've already done something with them. You established a rapport. Well, maybe they owe you a favor. Or maybe you can use what Tom said, you could guilt them into doing something. Okay, and this is, uh, this is good, especially for a Jew like me. You know, guilt works. <laughs> You know, look at, I mean, look at uh, religion. What's that based on? Guilt. And look at how big religion is and how controversial it is as well. So, you know, you don't, you, you want to pull on all the favors people owe you. I know I've spoken to Jill and she has some connections of people, uh, you know, from her past. And I could tell from her voice that she's a little reticent to put leverage on them. Forget it. Put the leverage on them, you know. Uh, what are you going to do? You hardly talk to them anyway. So, you know, what, what's the most they can say is they can ignore you. You know, BFD, most people are going to ignore us anyway. <laughs> so, you know, kind of things. Now, uh, Darnita, you have some, uh, some interesting uh, things that you mentioned to me today earlier. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, about what uh, Darnita told me. This is, this is classic. Okay, this is what makes it all worthwhile. Well, Darnita is experimenting with Instagram, and I'm sure that she's doing that because I pushed on Instagram pretty hard. Okay, and she uses her hashtags author alter ego. She uses hashtag shattered the name of the book, and then she got this brilliant idea to hashtag Appalachian. Okay, now. What happened? She she actually made inroads. Some uh, Appalachian radio stations started following her on Instagram. Some bloggers uh, were interested and started following her. Okay, so these are great resources for your press release. Is that? Oh my gosh! You know, you've already got three. Uh, you mentioned three people today, and how long have you been on Instagram? You know, a month at most. Come on! You know, this is great. You've made huge strides. Okay, and it shows that we can all make these type of strides. Okay, why is this radio station following Darnita? Well, who knows? But you know, you've got a hook now. Okay, so you come up with your with your subject line that's going to, you know, have the word Appalachian in it, obviously, right? Because you've already found that that's their buzz term. And, uh, you know, come up with a way of weaving that into the story. Um, you know, I really think that you, uh, you stumbled onto something. And the word is stumble, okay? She would never have you know, gotten there if she hadn't experimented. Uh, really critical, gang, you know. And if she hadn't gotten any results, she might have dumped the Appalachian uh, term and come up with a different hashtag to use, okay? It's, it's not rocket science, but it is scary, scary stuff. Uh, because we're all scared about making mistakes and, you know, doing something out of our, uh, you know, comfort zone. But, you know, I mean, Darnita was not comfortable with social media when we initially started talking. She's come huge strides. I mean, phenomenal. Uh, Darnita, I can't, I can't uh, you know, pat you on the back hard enough for what you shared this morning. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, these are the stories that, that really are great. A blog posting about what occurred would be helpful as well, because, number one, you're going to reiterate Appalachian, okay? It's going to be there four times in your blog posting, okay? Critical. Critical stuff is to, once you have a success, not to just leave it as a success. Try to leverage it into many successes with the same, you know, uh, same words. 
Um, really, really good stuff. Okay, uh, anyone else have any uh, ideas for titles for their uh, uh, subject lines for their um, for their press releases? Um, what I think we can do is, uh, you know, there aren't huge numbers of people online. So if you want to uh, either write a full press release or just some subject lines and send them to me, we will revisit this uh, in uh, two weeks after uh, the Jean Guthrie interview, assuming that she's going to follow through on that. I'm not sure if I had the right date. Uh, down and we can take a work session as a result we can kind of analyze some of this stuff and see where it takes us uh, so if anyone wants to do that uh, I'd be willing to take a look at it I will provide a response um, I can't guarantee that it'll be worthwhile response uh, my knowledge base isn't that great Okay, I'm just a step above uh, all of you because I've worked with a lot of authors who attempted these sorts of things. But I'm by, by no sense of word an expert. Um, let me see if I can track down um, some samples real quick. Okay, this may take me a moment, uh, so let me uh, let me go back to my my drive. The pack rat at work here, gang. Uh, let's just see. Nope, that's where it is. Uh, Ah, nope. That's a webinar, darn it. Now, I had found them earlier. Darn. Okay, let me think. Uh, let me think again. Where could they be? I think they're like somewhere really obvious. Oh yeah, maybe it's maybe it's in the folder marked press releases. What do you think? Okay, give me a sec. It's coming up. Okay, let me see if I can share this one with us. Okay, this is uh, this is Maurice's uh, press release. Okay, now even though Tom uh, said on the right hand side, I think he meant on the left hand side. Uh, but I could be wrong. I'd have to go back and ask him. Okay, so what we have here at the top, Tom said, in capital letters, for immediate release. Okay, contact soldier and publishing agent John Kogan. For those of you who don't know, that's me. Uh, phone number, email address, and the date. And here is the, the pitch line. Former yo-yo dieter, Houston author, offers proven remedy for obesity disease. Okay, now that uh, that's interesting. Okay, what uh, what uh, Maurice has done is he's identified himself as a local resident uh, to Houston, so this would be pitched to the Houston press, and he's also you know, kind of created the controversy. Well, here's a proven remedy for obesity. And he's uh, he's also identified his street cred, 
former yo-yo dieter. Okay, now, in his case, he dealt with the facts. You know, 69% of adults in the U.S. are either overweight or obese. Childhood obesity is more than doubled since the 70s. Far worse than obesity, more than 1 million adults diet each year, making four or five diet attempts during the year. The yo-yo diet syndrome is even more dangerous than obesity. Okay, so he's, uh, he's got my interest. If I was, uh, you know, the health and diet editor at the Houston, uh, you know, Times or whatever, this might be a good, you know, this might be something that will uh, interest me. Okay, so uh, now we're talking about uh, his book. In his book, My Life as a Diet, Understanding Healing for the Never-Ending Dieters, Maurice shares his reality of what it's like to live being a beast with a total diet mentality. Ultimately, uh, Mr. Horowitz provides a transitional plan of action that he developed, leading the readers who practice this plan to cease their yo-yo dieting, achieve a state of self-love and acceptance no matter what their weight. Though polar opposites, happiness and obesity can coexist and allow these lifetime dieters to achieve their life goals, including permanent weight loss, to dramatically improve health. Okay, so what he's done in this last sentence uh, is he's got his contact information here. Okay, and then he's also, for media interviews, contact John Cogan, soldier and publishing media representative. Okay, so uh, let, me, uh, let me go back and stop the, sh the screen share. Okay, so that gives you a little idea as to how you can move forward. It was very brief. It had some very strong points in his favor of what the pitch is, okay? So we all need to look at our pitch. So perhaps go back to our book blurb, because that was a place where we did the same thing, is we looking for our hook, our pitch. Let's take a look at that and see if there are components of the book blurb that make sense for the press release. Uh, that would be the starting point, okay? If you haven't done your book blurb yet, uh, perhaps that's uh, the place to start. Now, Dominique, uh, I think you've started to uh, raise your hand, so I unmuted you. Um, the con controversial part seems to be easier to be dealt with when it's a non-fictional uh, non book, it seems. Am I yes. right? Or I don't think so. UFOs spotted in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, in, in the press release, I, I tried to do. <laughs> I used um, a sentence from Einstein, and then I got into it. But anyways, yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, in your case, UFOs spotted in the Grand Canyon would be a great lead-in, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, you know, I mean, this is just off the top of the head, you know, it may need a little tweaking uh, as a result, but, uh, you know, I, all I have is a vision of your cover, right? Okay. <laughs> and there's a spaceship or, or spaceship mm -hmm. spotted in the Grand Canyon. And, you know, uh, you could make up a story. <laughs> You know, in uh, in Dominique's mind, she sees UFOs in the Grand Canyon every day. <laughs> uh, you know, what, however you you weave the the story, okay? Uh, but, but you said, uh, sorry, you said not to use a question. Yes, not to use the question. That's uh, that's really because. We're not known enough. We have to, it's almost like we have to uh, uh, be more definitive before we can raise questions. Now, uh, you can use questions in your blog posting. So, you know, uh, what, you know, so, so what came out of my thought process is that, well, look, if we're going to write a press release, let's write a blog posting as well. Let's use the same layout and use a different cut and 
And what we'll do is we'll see a little bit of difference in what we, you know, what a press release looks like and what a blog posting on the same content looks like, okay? Blog postings are ours. We can make up stuff, uh, you know, real easily. We can make it more, you know, more cooler, shall I say, which is terrible English, I know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, this, you is, know. this is our stuff, you know. I, um, I recently... Uh, came to an epiphany in my book, okay? And uh, I had a section that didn't work, and I didn't, you know, I had ideas of how to do it, and just uh, the other day, maybe a day or two ago, the light bulb went off in my head. It's, oh, my gosh, because I knew that this section needed to be the most powerful, the best part of the book. Of course, every part of the book is the best part of it, right? Um, and it all, it all came together, and... Even though this is, you know, what I'd call my Hawaiian memoir, you know, I'm, you know, I can make up stuff. You know, I don't have to stick to truth as it happened. Okay? We can do that in our blog. You know, we can do that in our book. Even if it is a memoir, you know, the way we remember it may not be the way it really happened. OK, and we can take that choice. We can do that. You know, I'll probably address that in the uh, in my uh, uh, disclaimer in a very cute way. Um, but, you know, this is something that that's open to us because we're the content creator here. Now, in a press release, we kind of have to walk a finer line. Okay, because we can't uh, make up stuff that we can't deliver on. If we can deliver on it, on the other hand, then, uh, you know, we can make up whatever the heck we want. Um, so, anyway, uh, Dominique, you've got your marching orders. We have a, a fairly good idea for your press release. And as I say, you don't have to necessarily use that exact title, but I would use that concept, okay? I would look at that cover image and, uh, okay, now what does that imply in, uh, in words? Because I think it's, it's classic. Uh, uh, Anaria. You could, you could also shift that line um, by saying, um, you, you, uh, UFO checking out the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Get a spotted from this end, UFO checking out or cruising through to check out the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. checking out the sacred rocks, yeah. seeing who's showing up. <laughs> How about yeah. sightseeing? Sightseeing. Yeah, so you can get into Ooh, the that's that's great. That that would be uh that would be great <laughs> for the blog posting especially, okay? Because then you can weave a whole story that doesn't have to be real. Right? <laughs> that, uh, you <laughs> Uh, because I um, I say in my book that past, present, and future are one, I did start the press release um, with an Einstein quote. Uh, Einstein once said, for us physicists, uh, believe the separation between past, present, and future is only an illusion, also a convincing one. And then local Santa Fe resident and author, da 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 da. So that's the way I started it. <laughs> You know, what I might consider is moving that into the uh, second uh, paragraph of the, uh, of the press release, um, you know, where you're essentially validating your hook, your grabber, um, you know, but I don't know, you know, that, I think that's how I would address it. But, uh, you know, I don't know anything, so you stick with your guns and... Uh, oh, well, you know, I can have many ones. <laughs> well, you know, that's, a, that's really a good, uh, a good um, you know, response, okay? Because we can have lots of little grabbers that can ultimately be used in our social media uh, campaigns, okay? And these are really good. I mean, you can... Uh, you know, you can take advantage of this. You can cut up a blog posting, uh, you know, sentence, fragmented sentence by fragmented sentence and use them as individual posts. And this is something that I saw from Catherine, okay? When she was uh, pitching 
one of her blog postings and she was laying it out in the uh, dashboard to roll out, you know, every other hour or whatever. Um, the the, the uh, pitch changed each time. It wasn't the same, check out my blog. You know, she had a little bit of lead in. She used some... Uh, she uh, used some hashtags there in the uh, in the rollout. She changed some hashtags. She stuck with her branding hashtags, and then she tried a few other ones that were appropriate for what uh, what she's doing. Okay, so you know if we did the blog posting, you could uh, you could take uh, you know fragment by fragment and lay that out into your dashboard with the link to your blog okay well you know this was something we started talking about the people that see that social media post at 10 a.m are not the same ones that see it at 2 p.m okay um and we have to understand that that if we post it once we're only gonna we're only gonna you know uh, be seen by a small you know, segment of the people that are looking. Um, and uh, this is critical. Now, I like the idea of changing it up, you know, using the same, you know, the same blog, but changing the lead in, you know, uh, to, you know, a couple of different uh, sorts of pitches. I think that that has merit. I don't know if it makes any difference. Okay, we would need to experiment and see, well, what if we do the same thing and just lay the same, you know, lead in into our dashboard, goes out eight times uh, over, you know, two days, three days, where, you know, where did we get our spike from it? Okay, now you're wondering in your mind, well, how do I know? what the spike is okay well number one uh people may comment number two if we look at our google analytics which is usually part of a website we can determine where things came from and when okay if somebody visits our website every visit is tracked in google analytics shows that it came through facebook it shows that it came through facebook at 8 42 in the morning i mean this is uh this is stuff that most of us Never look at, but uh, you know we could, we could uh, you know do some analysis and we could fine tune what we're doing as a result of this. Well, you know, do we have any other questions, comments, uh, Darnita? Let me unmute you real quick. A comment about the subject line in uh, for my press release. On the back of my book, in the author about the author, um, there's a blurb about a little um, Appalachian woman that is intuitive, and she warns my character, um, my small child character, that something bad may happen to her in the future. And she's talking about the dog days of summer, and be careful because there's evil waiting for you. And I was wondering, as my subject line, if I could do, like, dog days of summer, some say this is an evil time? Possibly, possibly. I think that, uh, I think that in your case, you probably want to try to leverage the word Appalachian, okay? okay. Because you've, had, you've already shown that it had legs, okay? So, uh, you know, I, I would not discount that. I think it's probably got a lot longer legs than you think. Okay. Because just think about how quickly you got a response based on that, okay? Yeah, within a couple of hours, actually. Yeah, and, uh, and it certainly wasn't something that you expected. It was something that surprised you. And, uh, you know, whenever we're surprised like that, you know, we, we definitely want to put that in big letters on our computer saying, Appalachian. <laughs> let's let's use that, and uh, that opens up a lot for you to do because what you can do now. Okay, and this is this is something that most of you don't understand yet. Okay, now if Darnita found that Appalachian had a lot of play, she could do a um, a Google alert for all articles on Appalachian, um, and you could repost some of those articles, 
in your uh, on your Facebook page. Remember that the Rama on Riding Facebook page is really nothing more than sharing and reposting. Okay, that's a strategy. We don't always have to make our own content. Um, and uh, you might find that uh, there's a lot of interest. And if you were to share these articles regularly, you might become the go-to spot for articles about Appalachia or Appalachia, however uh, you care to say it. And that could be a blog itself, you know? Heck, you know, you can have fun with these sorts of things. Like, you ain't from around here, it's Appalachian or Appalachian here. <laughs> you ain't from around here. Uh-huh. Now, I have hiked on the Appalachian Trail when I was a kid up in, uh, up in New Hampshire. Um, so, uh, you know, yes, you know, these are strategies that we can all take advantage of. Um, and, and ultimately, I, I think it makes sense to, you know, develop a, you know, kind of a system here. Okay, on Thursdays, I'm going to look at, uh, look at all the articles that were posted about Appalachia, and I'm going to repost uh, a couple of them on my Facebook page. Now, when you repost an article, you grab the link, you put it in there, under the link, you put your hashtags, okay? And uh, you can do the same thing with uh, Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, and even though uh, uh, people don't don't know yet the extent of where hashtags are going to take them, I think the world is going to be surprised when uh, Google search starts really, you know, entering into the hashtag world. And don't forget, gang, post on Google Plus. If you're going to do Mama, so when we're sending something like when we're posting and we put out, we put the, uh, the link first and then the hashtags or just like what, what are, um, cause I've been looking at this on Twitter and on, and some people have the hashtags first. Some people have like their tweet first, um, or their, their, uh, the name first and then hashtags is kind of scrambled you know i don't know if there's a rhyme or reason um to this okay i i've seen what you're talking about i saw that when Catherine did it uh she had a few hashtags maybe a, a little fragmented couple of words and then she had the bitly link to the uh article and uh you know and it was her article it was one of her blog posts for those of you who don't know what bitly does b-i-t-l-y what bitly does is it takes a url usually a long url and cuts it down into a very short url okay and for twitter that's critical because you're only allowed 150 characters per tweet and sometimes our URLs are longer than 150 characters themselves, especially an Amazon link. Okay. Can we go over again on how we do this? Because I've done that before, but I don't, now I don't remember how we did it. In order to cut the link down, first off, you go to bitly.com, B-I-T-L-Y, and uh, you click on it, and right there it says, uh, you know, uh, uh, put the link in, you cut and paste your link in and click, uh, you know, uh, actually, I think it even happens automatically. You put your link in and it spits it out. Very simple uh, approach. There are several other types of uh, things. I think Denise's is a different one. Um, I wanted to look a little bit deeper uh, to determine because the one thing that I I don't like about Bitly is it uh, it doesn't have any keywords now in the uh, in the uh, revised shortened uh, URL and I thought I saw one of them that kind of uh, took some of the uh, some of the you know the titles and and just shortened it I don't know uh, that was something I wanted to investigate. 
Very, uh, very simple, very necessary component. Uh, Jill, did you have a question or comment? Let me unmute you. Uh, I just wanted to know about hashtags. Where do they, where do they come from? You make them. You just put them together. Hashtag human fairies. But are they Facebook, Instagram, what media? I mean, it, it, or is it something totally different? Well, no, you're kind of, um, you know, they're currently, they're used a lot in social media. And the purpose is this. If you hashtag human fairies, okay, every time you post something and someone to, to click on the hashtag, what would come up is all of your posts right in a row. Okay, so it'd be a listing. Now, it started with Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook. I have a gut feeling that hashtags are going to take over the world. Okay? Um, <laughs> does, anybody own, does Twitter own hashtags? No, but there is a, there is a couple of... Uh, of there's a place you can register hashtags. So if you wanted to register hashtag uh, human fairies, uh, you could do that. Does no, that. I already did that. I already I have the, my domain. I have a domain. Is that what you're talking about? No, I was talking oh. about a hashtag. Oh, really? Uh, but does that do anything for you? I do not know because I don't think that it's a bad idea for for other people to use your hashtag, okay? If uh, if Hawaiian magic is a hashtag and a lot of people uh, that play in Hawaii post uh, that way, what difference does it make to me? Isn't it better that there's more than less? I don't know. You know, this is a, this is a question that I've often asked myself and i i don't think it matters i don't really want to register them uh to you know i don't see the purpose of it okay now uh maybe down the road i i might realize that there is a purpose for registering hashtags i don't know yet okay thank you Lama. and uh if you go back uh to uh youtube rama unriding channel and put in rama unriding uh, hashtags, you'll come to a couple of webinars I did about hashtags. Um, I think that's where uh, Darnita got most of her information. I think she was on. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talk about hashtags a lot. I've experimented, but I don't know anything about them. I just like the idea. I think they're cool. <laughs> like if you um, hashtag Appalachia. Uh huh. There's a lot of just pictures that comes up with Appalachia and also what I had put. And I was, that's what really surprised me that when I clicked on Appalachia hashtag, then there was my picture along with all the other ones. And that's great. Yeah, that, that just amazed me. And, and I had a picture, I, I took a quote out of my book, which, and, um, uh, I designed it so it would stand out. It was, the background was black, but the letters were white. And it said, um, y'all act like you got some sense. So that's a sentence right out of the book. So I, I'm still just amazed at getting that so quickly. You know, that's the thing that I noticed as well. When you hashtag things, you get results right away, okay? Um, you know, and I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, where the results take you, I have no idea, okay? But in Darnita's case, right off the bat, she has a contact now at a radio station and two bloggers. Um, you know, that's, that's about as good as it gets, the way I see it, okay? Now, the next step is for you to start checking them out following them, liking their, uh, their posts, communicating with them, engaging them, okay? I've already done that. I, I, I know. You, you listen carefully to what I say. I get it. And <laughs> at some point in time, uh, you will leverage them, okay? You can't leverage them at the beginning because you have no leverage, mm -hmm. okay? But 
if you lay the foundation and engage and become a known entity and make comments and blotty 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 well then uh, if you gave them a blog posting, they're going to be more inclined to share that. And if they have a big following and they share one of your blog postings, you know, you get traction. Um, very important components, gang. Well, we've almost gone through uh, two hours. It's hard to believe. I'm glad I had Tom's help in the first uh, 20 minutes uh, because I really wasn't sure what to say. I'm not an expert at, uh, at press releases. Um, but uh, the next uh, webinar, I think, is going to be Gene Guthrie's uh, interview, uh, Mystical Aria which is being launched, uh, I'm thinking it starts uh, on Monday, her launch. And, um, you know, this, uh, you know, Jean, uh, Jean hired an artist for a cover, and I think that's a, a cool approach. Uh, uh, you know, Jill, you might, uh, might want to hire her artist, uh, you know, because uh, she's got a fairy queen uh, on her cover. Maybe uh, this artist can do what you want as well. Oh, that was, um, <laughs> thanks. Does, um, does she have pictures also in the book or is it just the cover? You know, she has, she has some glyphs in her book. She's got a sword in it. Uh, she's got a few little things. We, uh, we put a character chart in there and she initially wanted it all black with stars and white writing and that just, did nothing but cause all kinds of problems. Um, and so we eventually she put it on white with black writing and that it was not a problem. So we learned, uh, we learned a few things as a result of this. And, um, you know, uh, she's, uh, she's an interesting character. She's got a number of books in this series, I, I think, uh, rolling around in her head. I don't know how far they are, but I think that anyone that's writing sequels uh, will want to talk uh, to her and ask questions based on that. And there are a lot of uh, authors writing sequels. Uh, the week after that, we're going to revisit uh, press releases. It's really press kits and uh, marketing kits. So it's going to be a little different, but at that point in time, if you want to uh, visit some press releases that you guys have written, some headlines uh, or uh, subject lines, we can do that out of that webinar. So I'd be more than happy to open up the forum. I like those work sessions because I feel like everyone really gets something concrete as a result of it. And... Uh, you know, that's a change up uh, for what I normally do, but I like that idea. It, it helps build community. Yes. Um, I just wanted to, to make a quick comment. You know, um, you threw me for a loop when you talked about the press releases, the follow-up of the press release. And I, you know, I took very good notes. And then, then you said we should not be doing our own follow-ups. And, you know, that can be kind of difficult if you don't have a secretary, if you don't have a friend. So... I, well, not that we don't have friends, but <laughs> um, but um, I just thought, you know, um, the way we network right now with one another, that might be a good way to do follow-ups for press releases because, you know, if somebody is sending out five press releases, or if several of us are sending out five press releases, we could do follow-ups for one another. And that way, we're not calling for ourselves and, you know, we don't have to say that we're the secretary, but, it, you know, it's a different person that's calling for the follow-up yeah uh, you know Miriam that's a really good idea maybe we should find some partners here and uh, and work this uh, component I think that ultimately our biggest point of leverages are our local media uh, you know uh, you know in uh, you know I'm thinking about uh, you know both uh, Dominique and Anaria being in the Santa Fe Albuquerque area uh, there are publications there you know, Anaria, uh, the uh, uh, Sedona, you know, I can't think of what it's called now. It's uh, Emergence, I think it's called, Sedona Emergence or something, uh, would be classic. Uh, um, you know, uh, 
Uh, Dominique, writing about UFOs, there are UFO uh, organizations out there. You want to leverage that, okay? You know, you got to take a look at, at what your resources are and start putting lists of publications together. There still are magazines, there are blogs, there are newspapers. Um, you know, so ultimately we're going to want to create a listing of this. And I would start with your local papers. Um, I would also look at, uh, you know, college uh, reunion alumni things, high school alumni reunion type things as well. You know, these are, you know, a lot of times they're always looking for what is, you know, that class of 74 doing nowadays? You know, and uh, and all. of course, I found out that I was the only one uh, that uh, hadn't, uh, you know, hadn't uh, sold out to the man in my college reunion, and it was really quite entertaining to see all of it. I mean, not to say that I had uh, I had been successful and made lots of money like some of my friends, but uh, I think I had a lot more fun with life than they did. <laughs> So we we measure success differently, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and this is this is important for us to realize because we all measure book success differently. When somebody mentioned that my book made them laugh, you know, to me that was a huge success because that was really one of my goals with the book is to make people laugh. You know, uh, someone else mentioned, oh, you know, Rami, you captured a time that's gone, and I thought about it, said, yeah. You know that's what uh, that's what the book did, and that's what my my second book's going to do as well. Captured a time that's no longer there. Things aren't the same as it was 20, 30 years ago. And if we do our job, we can share that, and people get the feeling of what it was like, and so they can live through you vicariously. Okay, well, Anaria, we have you uh, scheduled. Let me just go back so we can confirm this. I wrote a lot of pages of notes today. Um, and I think I put you. Yeah, 27th of February. February 27th. That will be the first of my uh, webinars back from Sedona. So uh, I'll be ready for okay. the crystal skulls. Yay. <laughs> and for like you know, for people who are doing the launch and like Ari, I mean, uh, Gene Guthrie is going to be launching, I guess, on Monday. That, that those few days in there, she has six days. That's when you want to buy uh, her book or her um, uh, her ebook because that's and even going up online and looking at her page, like Rama said, it's going to help her. So that's where we can all help help by at least getting up on her page. And buying her um, ebook. <laughs> yep, it, it's a, it's important. We can, you know, we've got enough people in the publishing program to make every single person a number one Amazon bestseller. Especially if we go back to the old method, where you tell everyone go to Amazon between four and six on Friday and buy my book. I mean, that's the way it was done in the old days before we uh, encountered Denise, who has a little more sophistication in what she's doing, but essentially she's doing the same thing. You know, she optimizes it so that it, uh, you know, there's a lot more to it than just going to the Amazon between four and six, but that's a possibility as well, especially for authors that are, uh, you know, a little uh, cash strapped and uh, can't afford uh, Denise's program. And I do have a number of authors that are, uh, you know, in that situation. So uh, we will uh, we will try to leverage our group for everyone's, uh, you know, uh, success. And uh, maybe I need to put a little uh, paragraph in, a couple of sentences uh, about book launches and what to do. So uh, you know, I'll I'll add that to my uh, to my template. Yeah, that'd be good. I do think that's a really good idea because, um, you know, getting just a separate email, maybe with just a one-liner, you know, so-and-so is launching, you know, get online from this day to this or between whatever time, um, that would really be wonderful because if I get a list of people that are launching and I don't exactly know when they're doing it, um, I, I have it, I have good intentions. 
but you know, if I knew that it had to be a certain day or between a certain time, like I would put that in my phone with a reminder or something. So I love that idea. I love to support everybody. You know, Miriam, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I can't fulfill on that. I'm only allowed two emails to our list, uh, you know, uh, a week. One to the publish now, one to the general list. But I can build it into my uh, my write up, um, and uh, maybe I can uh, do some posting on uh, on my Facebook page or some of the other Facebook pages as a result of this. So. Uh, I appreciate what you're saying. It's just one of the things that we all need to be careful about is over you know, sending too many emails because you run the uh, the problem of nobody looking, nobody wanting to, uh, to open it. And I did change something up that I think was successful. I put the topic of the week's webinar right at the very top of the uh, the uh, uh, email going out as an experiment. I don't know anything, but I thought, well, let me do that and see what happens. But you know, ultimately, I, I, I noticed it right away when you changed that up, and I thought it was great. So, and I understand about not being not sending out too many emails. But if you, if you, you know, like you said, if you would work that in, that would be terrific. But no, your emails are great. I just love how you've developed the way that you send it out. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's been fun, uh, you know, and if uh, we want to do a webinar about constant contact and how to set up things, uh, you know, I can bring Greg on board and I can actually show you how it's done as well. It's, it's really quite easy once you, once you do it a few times. Uh, but until you do it, it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to do something wrong? <laughs> and my launch, I think, is still this week, this Thursday on the 11th. If and if it moves, it's going to go to the Sunday the 14th. But the 11th, she, she said, even if we did it, it'll still count. She said, so the people who still have the 11th in mind, it'll, it'll still count for that. Well, you know, unfortunately, on this week, uh, Anari, I did not have a good link to your launch page. Uh, you know, I checked the link that Denise had sent me, and it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't going anywhere. So no. I will uh, I will did update. You tell her that? Um, you know, I have to uh, follow through. I have a, I think you guys sent me a link now that works. Okay, good. I'll send a note to her to remind her again. Sounds good. Everyone, I'm going to head to the beach. So you all have a great day. Uh, we're going to head to the beach. I'm going to kayak and float about. And then we're going to the farmer's market. So we have a nice day set up. Everyone, enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll be back during the week for the revision updates and publish now updates. And then uh, Gene Guthrie uh, next, uh, next Saturday. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Okay.